Oh, and look at this. Wow, I tell you, these are unbelievably clean animals. Okay, so you picked, shut up. <laughs> Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog and another edition of how this razor blade will either make my day absolutely amazing or make me want to cry. Now, the truth is we are going to cut some eggs. For some of you, that is amazing. Other ones are like, oh, no, not another egg cutting boring video. Let's go ahead and jump in this first clutch, which is another one of those banana chocolate spitters that has been really disappointing me, bred to a chocolate pinstripe. Now, I will say on default that we had a mahogany male in here as a backup just in case. So let's hope we finally hit some gold with this one. Let's jump into the first day. And as you guys know, I've been whiffing on the banana chocolate supers and all kinds of stuff. So let's see what we have here. Oh, okay. Well, right off of the bat, we see something that is really awesome, but not quite what I was hoping for. And this, of course, is a chocolate mahogany. You can see right here that it's got a beautiful dark pattern to it. Absolutely gorgeous thing. But that means that the mahogany male definitely followed at least one of these eggs, which means that the chances of me getting a banana super chocolate is very slim but let's move on to the next day <laughs> and it's like I always say you just never know what's gonna happen until you see what's gonna happen here so maybe we'll get a banana super chocolate you never know okay what's in this egg Oh, it looks like this is just a normal chocolate ball python I don't see any mahogany in there or anything it's okay one more egg to go I'm running out of chances with this banana chocolate spinner I tell you what okay here we go another chocolate ball python right there so there is no bananas, no banana super chocolate pinstripes or spinners. Oh, that's all right. I think I might have one more clutch for the year and that's it. That male has definitely not been a good male for me this year, but that's okay because we still got some really cool animals. A mahogany chocolates are really cool and we still have two more clutches to cut today. And this next clutch is actually a lorry ball python bred to a mimosa ball python. The lorry is of course a co-dominant mutation. So is the champagne along with the ghost, which is recessive. And look at right here, guys. This egg just literally started to cut. Look at all these cut marks in it. That's from that baby snake and they'll have a little egg to and that's how they make all their slices. So I know this clutch is ready to go. So let's go ahead and jump in and we'll cut the one that already sliced on its own and see what's in here. What do we got? Ooh, all right, fantastic. Right off of the bat, that is actually a Lori Champagne. And you can really tell by the Lori Champagnes because they have this really silvery look to them. It's really a beautiful snake. So I'm really excited what the future has for this project. Breeding into a bunch of other mutations is gonna be really cool. Let's see what else we got in this clutch. Egg number two, and this is a little plump egg. It's still got lots of liquid in it. So we'll see what we got in here. All right, what do we have? Oh, look at that. That is a perfect example of a Lori ball python. You can see how it's got a much darker look, very little yellow to it. And look at that alien head right there. I mean, it literally looks just like a little alien, doesn't it? So that's a Lori ball python, which of course is near and dear to our hearts because it was named after my wife, Lori. Let's move on to the next egg. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, I love getting back to cutting eggs, and I'm happy that some of you really love the egg cutting too, because I absolutely enjoy it a lot. Oh, look at that. This actually looks like probably just a normal champagne. You can see it doesn't have nearly as much silver in the side as the other one had, so that looks like it's just a champagne ball python. A couple more eggs in this clutch too, so let's see what we have here. Oh, oh, oh. that one kind of popped out on me. It's like, leave me alone. Oh God, I've gotta be really careful on this one. That's a feisty little monkey inside that egg right there. Look at that. And look at that beautiful stripe down the middle right there. I'm pretty sure that this one is also a lorry because usually that striping is really pronounced when you get into the lorry ball. But we're gonna have to wait till that one hatches to make sure that's a lorry. It doesn't have quite as much silver in the side as the other one did, but I think it's probably a lorry champagne. One last egg in this clutch to see what we have. Oh my gosh, and of course these are gonna all be het for ghost as well. Oh, and here looks like another Lori ball python that of course will be het for ghost. And we've never produced a ghost Lori ball python, so that could be a pretty interesting snake on its own. So not only is it cool that we're producing Lori champagne stuff, but it's also cool that we could potentially produce ghost Lori champagnes or mimosa champagnes, and of course just some Lori ghosts down the road, which would be really cool. And one last clutch. This is actually a female VPI Azanthic, which is a recessive mutation that's basically lacking the yellow, and it's actually bred to a dragonfly, and then backed up by a scaleless head. So most likely the dragonfly, which is a pastel fire pinstripe, is the father because the 
scale set was in only at the last minute. Regardless, everything in the clutch is going to be head for VPIA Xanthic, which of course is lacking the yellow pigment. And then who knows what other mutations. Let's jump in. And oh, look at this. That first egg, you can see right here, it's already slit. So we already know that these animals are ready to pop too. So let's go ahead and cut this one and see what's in here and see if we can start to tell who the daddy is. Okay, right off the bat, look at how pretty and clean that animal is right there. And of course, that is a fireball python. So it's a fireball python het for Azanthic, meaning that the dragonfly at least fathered this egg because of course it was a pastel fire pinstripe, meaning that the dragonfly has fire in it. Of course, the scaleless head didn't. So let's see what the rest of the clutch has to offer. All right, let's see what this egg number two has. Again, it's going to be really cool to see some of this stuff in a Xanthic in the next generation for sure. Oh, and look at this. Wow, I tell you, these are unbelievably clean animals. I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to be completely honest. I have a feeling that whatever bred this has another gene because I've never seen a fire pinstripe this clean before. Of course, this would be a fire pinstripe head for Xanthic. Now some recessive mutation will kind of pass on a little bit of what we call like a visual heterozygous. There's a chance that's what could be happening here, but this looks like something else. Almost like there's another enhancing gene in it. Let's see what else we get. I couldn't be more happier with how these babies look. I mean, they are absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what we got in this one right here. Oh, okay. It looks like what we have here is a pastel fire, again, het for Xanthic. So that's basically a firefly het for Xanthic. A few more eggs to go. See what this one is. Oh man, again, a really pretty clean animal. Wow, that looks like a pastel fire head Azanthic as well, or firefly head Azanthic, but it's really strange how clean these ones are. Wow, I can't wait till they hatch to really get a good look at them. Last couple eggs of the day, guys. All right, let's see. We still haven't got a dragonfly though. We've got a bunch of other combinations. Okay, this actually looks like just a pinstripe ball python that's het for Azanthic. You can see that's a pretty normal looking animal. So that one there, I don't think really is expressing too much at all, other than it's a pinstripe that's het for Azanthic. Come on, let's at least get one dragonfly that's het for Azanthic here. Come on, odds. What do we have here? I see a pretty cool little head. I don't know what it is. Let's see. Ooh, huh. Well, that is definitely another fire pinstripe head for Azanthic, but it's really faded looking. Hmm. There is no doubt something is going on here. I'm not sure exactly what's happening here, but there's definitely something muddling in genes. Again, it could just be the expression of that Azanthic animal and its recessive gene, kind of making things look a little bit different, but these don't look like normal fire pinstripes or normal fires for that matter, or fireflies for that matter. Regardless, that's pretty awesome. So that concludes the cutting section of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. For the people that love cutting, I know that you are happy for it. What do you say we head over to the shop? And really quick, I wanted to show a couple ball pythons that actually did have that I brought over to the shop. Of course, this is a fire bee bred to a pastel. So we produce some really beautiful animals here. This is actually a fire bee ball python, which is a pastel, a fire, and a spider, which is really cool. Check this one out. This is really an interesting animal here. I mean, it looks kind of just like a pastel, to be honest with you. I don't think it has fire in it, but look at how interesting the head pattern is and the whole body. I mean, it's just a really interesting snake. Again, I'm not 100% sure what it is, other than maybe just a really pretty pastel. And then and ironically enough, I think this is just a super pastel. I think we whiffed on the fire version on this guy and just ended up getting a super pastel. Unfortunately, when you get into that fire ball python and pastel, it kind of blurs the line a little bit between super pastel or super pastel fire. Still a cool clutch. And then honestly, this clutch was a little bit of a disappointment, although it's still really beautiful babies. Look at all of these yellow belly ball pythons right here. I mean, they are absolutely gorgeous. Now the disappointment was is I actually bred an ivory, which is a super yellow belly to a yellow belly. So in theory, half of these babies should be white babies. Remember that clutch from a handful of days ago where I had like more ivories than I should have? I think I had five ivories out of six eggs. Well, the odds gods made it up back to me and I miss all ivories in this clutch, but nevertheless, I'm still happy. And speaking about happy, let's go ahead and just jump into some colubrid eggs that are hatching. Take a look at this. I am super happy about this. This is actually an albino Arizona mountain king snakes. And I know I showed you some albino Nelson's milk snakes just a day or two ago. They look really similar, but they're completely different animals for sure. This is actually a Lampropeltis pyromelana, whereas the other ones was a Lampropeltis triangulum Nelson's eye. I know you guys probably aren't that 
interested in technical names, but regardless, that's the difference between those two. And of course, the Nelsons get a little bit bigger, a little bit different overall animal. And then moving on to this clutch, this is actually really cool. Take a look at that baby hatching right there. And then these guys, these are what they actually call either ghost glades or white-sided glades. Now, actually, a guy at Gulf Coast Reptiles produced the very first ones, and he called them ghost glades. Now, ghost animals are typically hypomelanistic and azanthic or aneurythristic, so it's a little bit confusing. So we actually started calling these guys white-sides Everglades rat snakes, just so people didn't get confused and go, wait a second, that isn't an azanthic hypomelanistic. So regardless, uh, some cool glades rat snakes hatching. And then lastly, I was super happy about this. Take a look at these guys right here. This, of course, is a 50-50 banded black and white California king. And then we've got some really nice, beautiful, high white, black and white cow kings. Take a look at these guys right here. I mean, hoo-hoo doggy. Whoop, that snake almost got away. Uh-oh. No more jailbergs. Guys, look at this one right here. Oh my gosh, that thing is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, back in. No one gets out today. Okay, stay in there, buddy, buddy. Look at that one over here. Oh my gosh, I love it. You know, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of feel like black and white cow kings have the momentum that the Mexican black kings had a couple years ago. And what I mean by that is the Mexican black king snakes, of course, were always extremely popular, but they were relatively inexpensive. And a couple years ago, people just started to love them and they started going crazy. And the price literally like went up like four or five times. And I can understand, I mean, Mexican black kings are absolutely gorgeous animals. Well, I kind of feel like the same thing is starting to happen happen with some other colubrids, in particular black and white cow kings. So it wouldn't surprise me that in the next couple years, if you see black and white cow kings going from now maybe $70 to $100, maybe up to $150 or even $200. Now keeping in mind, just about two years ago, they were only like $40 to $50, bucks, so they've already about doubled their price. But people just love them, and colubrids are kind of making a comeback, which I absolutely think is amazing. So you picked out three <laughs> different snakes for us to show today. Um, uh... Yeah, I've what been putting got? a bunch of new ball pythons on the site, and so obviously I get to see them all. And uh, there's a few that I think are pretty cool that I'm going to share with you today. This guy is one of a few albino black pastel ball pythons that we have. And not only are these guys beautiful from their contrast, but the thing I love about these, and I was just talking to Miri as I was doing it, is they seem to have a lot of heart patterns down the side like this one had yeah. a pretty nice one right oh, yeah. there yeah and it's something that i don't know if it's just this line or if it's something with all of the albino black pastels but it, I, I thought it was super cool just for your information that was mo2 <laughs> so if you want that one it's mo2 that is website. true <laughs> but a lot of them have it too and i try to showcase that in the pictures this one oh my god uh, you like this one? I like it a lot, <laughs> but not not so much that I'm gonna tell him to keep it. Holy crap, this thing is stunning. It's Dang a pastel it. calico, but look at that. Yeah, the pattern's really bold. Holy cow, this is a pastel calico, like I said, and uh, when calico cool. expresses itself really well, like it does here, it is a beautiful thing. I know that I have been seeing a lot of these mimosas recently. Uh, we, got, we got quite a few of them, and yeah. I personally, these are one of my favorites, I guess you could say. I don't know why, they just got a really cool color that appeals very well to my eyes. I'll show you a normal one first. Okay. So this is just your regular, run of the mill, beautiful mimosa. Yeah. So it's got a really nice uh, color on it, the orange. Wow, we produced some cool paradoxes, but this one them. takes the cake. This thing is a stunner. Um, I almost, I had to talk Brian into selling it. But look at this thing. He's got a total normal looking like ghost head that on him. Crazy. And then look at the cool paradox Just going on there. Down there. You know, it goes on the sides, it goes all the way around. That Almost like so when you get crazy. the hides that just have the normal head and the white body. That's how yeah. this guy is. That's so cool. Well, that is it here. Just uh, putting some little baby ball pythons on the website. We got a ton of them now. And, uh, there's still more hatching, yeah? Oh, yeah. There's a lot more hatching, there so <laughs> stay tuned and uh, <laughs> lots of work. <laughs> keep refreshing that BHP Reptiles page because you never know what might pop up. <laughs> Every day, new stuff. <laughs> all right. Back over the zoo, and I'm sure you guys are probably like, all right, Brian, these updates without cages is getting boring. I realize that I do just have to do a little bit of work with some different things here. Like, I'm trying to finally get the cable ran for the TV. I'm going to put up some half walls over here, which will be a utility room, and then start the wall over here 
here, but I can't really finish that wall until the gator tank is in, because it's gonna be built into the wall. But again, hey, the 30th of this month is when the cages show up, so we don't have long at all. Literally, what's that, like 10 days from now, so it is coming up really quick. So, and by the way, I wanted to update you guys a little bit on this. I mean, take a look at this girl right here. Of course, this is the ball python enclosures that we're gonna be selling, and by the way, we're getting really close. I cannot be more happy with the way this cage has actually worked out. I mean, just her actions speak louder than anything else. This was an animal that used to hide all the time, and she's almost always just right out in the open. Every now and then when she wants to hide, she'll hide under here. When she wants to hide, she'll hide under here. But most of the time, she's just either hanging out here, or sometimes she's up on this ledge right here. That is a behavioral thing that I have never seen from this animal, so I am super happy. We're getting close. A bunch of people have asked me. I would say within two or three weeks, we'll be offering ball python, bearded dragon, and hopefully leopard gecko cages, so we are so close. Hang in there, guys. But regardless, I'm gonna just do some boring work over here at the Reptarium. Oh, and by the way, guys, I know I always wanna be completely transparent with you guys, and I try to really bring you guys along on the journey. Now, I'm not gonna get into the details of every single thing, but I will tell you that we're about $45,000 over budget on the Reptarium. <laughs> That's right, I spent about $45,000 more than I kinda of set aside to do this, but you know, every time something really cool would come up, like window displays that I thought was maybe gonna be 1,500, but it was $5,000. You know, the pond for Bowser, originally we thought where it was gonna cost us maybe $1,500, we cost over $5,000. The gator tank ended up costing a bunch, bunch of the enclosures we ended up putting extra money into because we just thought, oh my God, that's gonna be so amazing. All kinds of different things. Well, that all adds up and it came up to about $45,000 over. I did wanna really say, if you guys have any interest in helping over on my Patreon page, and I will put a link in the description, we're probably gonna do a handful of like $500 donations to the zoo where you would get a plaque that would stay up forever, just kind of like a thing saying thank you for doing this for us and helping us along on this. Again, I never wanna beg for money. We're gonna be able to pay for this no matter what, whatever happens, but it is a little bit more difficult when I'm $45,000 over budget. If it's something that you or someone else you know would like to kind of contribute, just to kind of help ease that burden a little bit, that would be great. If not, don't worry about it. I never want you guys to go out of your way, but I'll put a link in the description to the Patreon. There'll be a level there. There'll be a one-time donation. Uh, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Regardless, it's gonna be amazing no matter what happens. With all that said, I think I'm just gonna spend the next couple hours messing with my animals. Right? Take a look at this Brazilian rainbow boa. Oh my gosh, that thing is absolutely incredible. And a lot of you guys have asked me, like, well, we're gonna have more Brazilians because we had that one litter and they were sold out in like a day or so. We have a bunch of females that grab it. Plus, I have that friend that I bought all those Brazilians from last year. He has several females grab it. So we'll have a bunch of Brazilian rainbows back here in the next week or two. I'm sure something on that lines. Regardless, like I said, I just need some time with my animals. It's been absolutely crazy with all this organization of all the things I've got going on. So for now, I'm just gonna shut it down, spend time with my animals, Animals and try to get into my little bit of a peaceful spot, if you know what I mean. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope that you have an absolutely amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. As always, your guys' support means the world to me, and I really, truly do love you guys. And I'm not just saying that. I realize that all the things I get to do in life is because of your guys' support, and that means the world to me. Thank you. Do me a couple favors before we get out of here. Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on. Make sure to comment down below, because I love reading about you guys. Be kind to someone today, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow. What's up, Mom? We, today, wait, what should I say? Not that. All right. <laughs> All right, so you did. Oh my goodness, one sec. Okay, so you picked. Shut up. <laughs>